Jim Jordan wants to question, this is in the uh, Judiciary uh, Committee, this was last Thursday, Lena Khan, and, and I should say these hearings, uh, I think, worked out relatively well for Lena Khan at the end because um, in many respects, what she's doing is unimpeachable. And the Republicans have a real problem. They have been talking about big tech for a long time, complaining about big tech. And it turns out that the bigness is not the issue. Mm. They just want tech that is like... With their guys involved. Yes, where, exactly. Where, you know, you're, the, these right-wingers are algorithmically boosted by a total freak named Elon Musk, right. um, who now puts, like, the paid subscribers at the front of the line. So they get to be privileged. I mean, they're, they, they don't... Conservatives don't feel like they can compete in the marketplace of ideas. So they just need a big, big daddy to, to, to rig it for them. Yeah. So the issue isn't so much big tech. It's that we just don't like the politics of the tech. Woke tech. <laughs> Why are you harassing Twitter? Uh, Congressman, thanks for the question. As you might know, the FTC's work on Twitter goes back a decade. Back in 2000. I'm not talking about a decade. I'm talking about now. Back 12 demand letters in 10 weeks, 300, over 350 separate requests you've demanded of Twitter. Why are you harassing them? Twitter has a history of lax security and privacy policies. Pre you've asked for every single communication relating to Elon Musk, not communications that he just sent to someone or some or communications he received, but any time he's mentioned. That, that actually seems more, actually more than harassment. That seems like almost an obsession. Why, why, the, why, why such an intense focus? Can you pause it for a second? Um, the Republican Party in the House would never be interested in internal communications at Twitter. I mean, that is like beyond the pale, right? They would never want emails, texts released or have any kind of like witness come out, you know, someone that name, it rhymes with Shmat Shmaibi to come on and speak about the internal communications at Twitter. Why would you why was the House harassing Twitter at that time? We should also say that what the FTC is doing is completely consistent with actions they take in safeguarding the privacy yeah. information of American citizens. They will go after uh, companies that will that have in some way leaked uh, information or have had an improper security that allowed their stuff from being you know hacked. Um, and the way they do that is to find internal deliberations. They don't do this willy nilly. Go ahead. Communications he received, but any time he's mentioned, that that actually seems more, actually more than harassment. That seems like almost an obsession. Why why the why why such an intense focus? So, Congressman, again, it was found that Twitter's lax privacy policies allowed unauthorized users to co-opt Twitter accounts, including that of Fox News. Subsequently, Twitter voluntarily entered into a consent order with the FTC. Here's, here's Unfortunately, what you wrote in December, found, Madam Chair. Here's what you wrote in December. Identify all journalists and other members of the media to whom Twitter has granted access since Musk bought the company. You want to know the name of every journalist a private company has talked to? Think that's consistent with the First Amendment? Congressman, as a former journalist, I take extremely seriously the valuable work that they do and understand that there can be instances in which government action is unjustifiably Particularly, particularly Madam Chair, if I, could, particularly, if I could just interject, but particularly in the context here. I mean, it's bad enough if you got government asking a private company about who are the journalists you're talking to. You name four of them and say, we want the other names of any journalists you may, in fact, be communicating with. That's bad enough. And I think a threat to the First Amendment freedom of the press. But in the context of giving us information about how government had suppressed speech on these platforms, that's the context you're asking for. I think that's particularly troubling, don't you? Congressman, the consent decree that we have prohibits Twitter from sharing personal information with third parties. When we read in the papers, like everybody else, that Twitter may have granted access to third parties, that's what our teams were seeking information about. Again, this is a company whose history with the FTC Madam, goes Madam back Chair, a decade. I, I, we, we got limited time. You know, he should have cut him off. She, he should have cut her off before she got that last answer out. Because let's be clear what she's saying. These 
reporters like Taibi, like um, uh, what's her face, the the one who lies Barry about Weiss. trans people. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Barry Weiss. Barry Weiss. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Michael Schellenberger. Uh, Michael Schellenberger, the Alex guy Ferenson. who's uh, <laughs> climate uh, denialist. Yeah, yeah. Um, et cetera, et cetera. These people basically said that they got a chance to look at the algorithm, see who was boosted, who wasn't, that they had access, unfettered access, that's what they said at the beginning, incidentally, um, to these, uh, these, these, these Twitter algorithms and whatnot. That could have been uh, used to look into journalists, for instance, that those uh, hand-selected... And under the consent decree, which Twitter had voluntarily entered into, they were not allowed to provide that information to third parties. And so the FTC, in defense of the privacy of Twitter users, basically went in and said, we need to see what you gave them and who you talked to and who you allowed this access to. It's exactly what a regulator should do. I mean, this is this, is this whole thing of it's... It's a libertarian free speech argument. Personally, like I don't like DHS telling Twitter what they should do or or, or, or whatever because I don't like the Department of Homeland Security and the Pentagon, right? Like I think yeah, we should be uh, even legislating those out of that. But like the FTC or the uh, CDC during a pandemic, I'm not so much a libertarian. I don't think that they have absolutely zero to say to private corporations. I think those corporations are subservient to the American government, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, here's Jim Jordan. Now, you know, talking about big tech being a problem, defending Twitter, defending the idea of Twitter giving third parties access to information after they have signed a consent decree not to do that with the U.S. government. Here he is on uh, CNBC now just full on defending the concept of big tech where we were told that these Republicans have become sort of more populist. But let's just be clear. The populism that we're talking about with Republicans is about allowing for more racist and misogynist ideas to carry more weight in our society. The populism does not include actually going after the centers of and the concentration of power and wealth. And I give you Jim Jordan um speaking to that on cnbc i think anyone would would tell you that big tech has a lot of power and and you know on the flip side yeah. of what you were just talking about they are able to decide what we see in a lot of ways and and i don't know whether their de facto monopolies just from being so good or so dominant in some of their positions isn't there a place maybe for for chair khan's um, stance that it, it maybe if you just sit back and let anything happen you do get the status quo that could be dangerous pause and, it and listen I <laughs> when a cnbc i wasn't just about to say is the voice of reason if you're what on cnbc and you find the huh? cnbc host on squawk box newsmaker whatever it is is to the left of you on market concentration well you know you've got a problem well let's whoopsie. Let, whoops oh wow well, i mean <laughs> you, you, you pulled out that filter um let's be clear though and be even more cynical i forget what this host's name is but uh, joe kernan joe kernan uh -huh. cnbc owned by comcast corporation comcast certainly not not a monopoly in some ways like sometimes you get this like hysterical coverage of big tech from cable news because they see them as a threat oh of course and, and like specifically on conservative media let's just be like real if a murdoch owned corporate uh, uh corporate entity like fox news when they rail against big tech that's in part due to like the fact that they are self-interested in that conversation roll back a little bit and let's let's their de facto monopolies just from being so good or so dominant in some of their positions isn't there a place maybe for for chair khan's uh, stance that it, it maybe if you just sit back and let anything happen you do get the status quo that could be dangerous and and i think i've heard people say she's going to take uh sw big swings at these things and she knows she might lose but she thinks otherwise that stasis is not the way to do it, that there are antitrust concerns with some well, of these behemoths and that you might as well give well, it a I, shot. If you lose, you lose. 
Well, she's definitely losing. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know that she's won anything, and I think that's good for consumers, good for the country. Uh, you know, we can, we can see that in, in her, in her record. But yeah, we should, we should be going after big tech when they're censoring American speech and when they're colluding with big government. As the judge, the federal judge, the federal court just said last week on July Fourth of all days that this was going on. Our government was pressuring big tech companies to limit what Americans see, what they post, what they say how that gets sent out, how that gets shared. They were doing all that. And the judge and the court slapped it down and said, no, preliminary injunction, you got to stop. And so that's where we need to be focused, not on stopping companies merging that's going to help the country and help the consumer. And that's the distinction. That's why that's what Republicans were all for stopping the speech. She's actually on the other side of that issue. And, and at the same time, trying to stop any type of business uh, uh, merger going on that would benefit the consumer. OK, well, let's just, just be clear. What um, in between all that gobbledygook that uh, Jim Jordan's talking about, mm -hmm. the problem with big tech is not that they're getting bigger. The problem isn't the big part. Mm. That's just a way in which he can. That's just a descriptive. That's just like that's just a brand that yeah. he has. Like this is the this is the and, and anybody who even pretended for a minute that that Republican complaints about big anything was anything other than a complaint about how they are not favoring or following policies or whatever it is. They don't have a problem with like big finance. They, they go after like Blackstone and this and that. Actually go after them. You want to make laws to, to keep hedge funds and these big holding companies and the financialization of our economy? Do it. But the idea that it's not that the problem with big corporations is not that they're big it's something else is exactly the sort of like bait and switch yep. that republicans use when they talk about this stuff you call it big tech for the reason why people call it big tech is problematic is because they're big mm. they don't call it smaller than government tech and think that that's the problem <laughs> the idea that he's like i'm okay with more mergers and they can get even bigger as long as they allow people to be as racist as they want to be on uh, the platform yeah. or deny, you know, the existence of a pandemic. Then I'm OK with it. It's always been like, you know, DeSantis says he's against Disney. What he's really against is the woke employees of Disney. And he's actually helping the executives sort of uh, discipline them. It's the exact same thing here. They, they, they just want their kind of guys in charge of the big tech. <laughs> um, and that's it. Like, they, that's, the, that's faux uh, right-wing populism, where it's just about having the right capitalists at the head of um, these corporations.